Tell us how this MAX conference has been unlike any other so far. This is going to be our largest MAX ever. It's a completely virtual and digital event. We're going to have this uh, across four keynotes across the globe, over 550,000 pre-registrations, 56 hours of uh, recorded content that we're going to be doing, whether it's product information, uh, your celebrities who are going to be talking about creative. So we're really excited. It has truly become the creativity conference for the world. How has the pandemic changed your demand and impacted the products that you really think are going to move the needle for Adobe this year? Well, Emily, as you know, we have three real uh, streams of businesses. And uh, today we're talking about Max, which is creativity for all. And I think creativity has never been more important uh, because it's been that emotional connection. It's transforming education. It's changing how customers interact with the enterprises that they work with. And so we've seen tremendous demand because as people have uh, turned to work at home or collaborate from home, uh, the need to create content is absolutely exploding. On the document side, accelerating document productivity and as you automate inefficient paper-based processes, electronic signatures, the need to uh, transfer information through PDF. Uh, in the last quarter, we saw some tremendous growth in the document business as well. And on the enterprise side, as you know, we created the digital marketing category and we uh, had this assertion that every single enterprise is gonna have to need to deliver a personalized engaging experience. And that is actually only going to accelerate. So we thought we had uh, tremendous uh, tailwinds prior to the pandemic but I think you're gonna see an increase in the demand for all our solutions. Last year, you rolled out Photoshop for iPad. There were some diehard Photoshop folks out there who weren't too happy with the product. What did you learn from that? Well, Photoshop for the iPad was a seminal moment and we were actually really pleased. Uh, you cannot take 30 years of technology that you've had on the desktop and replicate it overnight on the iPad. Uh, but the real transformation that we made was complete file format uh, compatibility and the ability for you to go from the desktop to the iPad and back. Uh, we decided to use compositing, which is one of the key features of Photoshop and make that accessible. So the feedback on that has been great. For new users, the ease of use and accessibility uh, for Photoshop on the iPad was tremendously well received as it is with the entire subscription service, we've been updating it and adding more and more features. This year we're announcing Illustrator for the iPad. We have Fresco on an iPhone. Uh, we have neural uh, filters with Photoshop. So the amount of innovation that we're delivering across all of these different surfaces just continues to increase. So people understand the vision, Emily. They know that we are saying wherever inspiration strikes, you're gonna have the right Adobe product. We introduced Photoshop camera after that. And so when you recognize that this is a journey and not a once event, uh, I think people recognize that we're actually delivering value across all these surfaces. Now, Adobe has been working on tools to combat misinformation and deep fakes, tools to help users determine whether images are really genuine. We are coming up on one of the most critical elections in our lifetime. What progress have you made and how much uh, heft are you willing to put behind this initiative? We made tremendous progress, uh, Emily. That's the sort of short uh, summary because our content authenticity initiative, uh, as you know, uh, we believe that this needs to be an industry uh, movement. We're certainly taking leadership as the company that creates all of the world's content, but in conjunction with companies like Twitter and New York Times, and you're gonna see a whole bunch more announcements, including what we can do with chip companies. The idea is to really say, when you create content in one of Adobe's tools, uh, you can sign it and you can determine the veracity of it. We then have to work with producers. So when content shows up on Bloomberg, it'd be nice for people to know this was Emily's content and you sign it. And then uh, with artificial intelligence, we can actually recognize when that's being changed. So this will take a movement uh, because we need the producers of the content, we need the authors, we need the tool providers like Adobe. Uh, but at the end of the day, it also requires the consumer to say, when I see that piece of content on Bloomberg, 
I want to really understand who created that content and what's the veracity of the content. So we never expected this to turn overnight, but we've made some dramatic progress. And the interest from other companies wanting to participate in this, to your point about the need uh, to understand where that content has come from, we're really confident that we're going to continue to make huge progress. Today, the DOJ filed a massive antitrust suit against Google. This is on the back of a report from the House that could pave the way for Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook to be broken up. You know, some folks I've spoken to think that uh, some of these allegations are ridiculous. I also spoke to investor Bill Gurley, who said that the regulation of Microsoft paved the way for these big tech companies today. What do you think? Do you think these companies are our monopolies and, and should they be broken up? My net takeaway and the way I think Adobe uh, needs to continue to operate is let's focus on the customer. Let's focus on the consumer. And at the end of the day, it's that trust with the consumer and making sure that you deliver great value that's critical. I think two other points that I would say is technology is moving so rapidly uh, that I think the more these large tech companies, including Adobe, say, how do we take responsibility for what we are doing uh, and make sure that we serve our customers well, that is only going to be the long-term solution associated with it. So um, I continue to believe that the relationship with the consumer is critical, but technology is moving so far, so fast that I think a lot of this also will require self-regulation. You are also on the board of Pfizer, and I can't let you go without asking, since there is so, so much excitement about a Pfizer vaccine. They've said that they could seek emergency use authorization for their vaccine by late November if the shot is effective in a late stage trial. How optimistic are you about that timeline? Well, first, uh, you have to absolutely uh, tip your hat to what the entire pharma industry, Emily, has done, whether it's on the testing side, whether it's on the uh, antibodies and therapies uh, uh, to address those who have been impacted. But clearly, as you point out, all attention is on the vaccine uh, because the vaccine will uh, you know, really provide over time the protection and the prevention uh, that I think is so critical. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, Pfizer has actually been completely transparent. Albert Borla, the CEO, actually had an open letter which talked about where they are in the process, how they're going to get an extremely uh, you know, scientific uh, group of people to uh, say. But we're all keeping our fingers crossed. And you know, when you're in these uh, trials, you just have to go through the trials. You have to examine the data. And they're smack dab in the middle of that. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm optimistic that pharma and science will prevail against this pandemic. When there is a vaccine, how do you think life changes? Do we go back to normal? Do you have an in-person MAX conference next year? Or is life and business fundamentally different going forward no matter what happens? I think both conferences as well as the future of work uh, have fundamentally changed change forever. And there will be more of a hybrid environment. Uh, but I do believe that there are some things that are substantially missing uh, when people are only working virtually. Uh, the energy that you get from people uh, you know, is completely missing. When you have a new initiative that you want to really get off the ground, I believe that collaboration uh, really happens far more effectively uh, when everybody is in a room. So I think everybody is going to be way more conscious of their health, no question about that. But I think we will uh, pivot back uh, to where there are going to be more in-person meetings. There's going to be more collaboration with people. And, you know, for those who get their energy from people and visiting customers and visiting consumers, uh, you know, I think we will all feel a lot better once the vaccine uh, is in place.